It's the first thing you notice about him. After a half century of playing everything from the greatest halls to the worst dumps, Tony Bennett still looks as if he loves to sing. Wherever, whenever. Happiness, always comes around to bless. Happy hearted ones, I guess it's true. Get your share, there's a lot of joy to spare. Any heart that's free from care will do. Tony Bennett, I've been waiting to do this interview for 25 years. Well, thank you. <laughs> I saw you, I told you earlier, I saw you as a kid of 12 years old yeah. in Hamilton, at Hamilton Place. Oh, yeah. And I mentioned it, and you actually remembered doing that concert. Oh, uh, you know why? It was the opening of the theater. It was. How can so you remember a, that? Well, how could you forget it? I mean, it's a beautiful <laughs> theater, and it still looks great. I was going back there the other night and performing yeah. there. They kept it in great condition, and it's a, one of the finest theaters. Hmm. Uh, beautiful acoustics, and then Martin, the architect, was really uh, a knockout. Mm -hmm. He really designed a beautiful hall. Now, I have seen you many times since then, including during your most recent visit to Toronto at Thompson Hall. Mm -hmm. And the one thing I notice about you every time you sing a song is that you've never, I shouldn't say you've never, I've never heard you sing the same song the same way twice. Right. You do something a little bit different every single time. Is that conscious? Are you just grooving with it? How, how well, does that happen? It, uh, you have to, it has to be believable. And, and, uh, I surround myself with great jazz musicians. Ralph's been with me, Ralph Sharon, with, for 30 years now. And uh, we just kind of absorb the moment. Take it up. Listen to this guy. I'm not a jazz singer, you know, but I know how to improvise. Cause then I, and then I, I'm, I'm being kind of cunning because I, what I'll do is get jazz musicians who just think of the moment only. And that's how they play. If it's raining, uh, they, they play the blues, you know? If the sun is out, then they're nice and tight and hit you right ahead of the beat, you know? Because I wonder, when you and Ralph rehearse, whether you consciously say, let's take this bar and do it differently this way, or are you just jamming out there? Well, there's a general production. It's a kind of, you know, it, it works such like a hand-in-glove situation because Ralph's been with me 30 years, and. You know, it's just, we hear a song and uh, intuitively the both of us go to work on it at the same time. And it just comes out and that becomes the way we do the song, generally do the song. You've been with Ralph, obviously, a lot longer than most couples have been married. Right. How have you avoided divorce with Ralph Sharon? You guys are still together. It gets kind of scary every once in a while, but <laughs> we get along good. We like, what, he's really, I, I have a wonderful brother. And believe me when I tell you that, Ralph is closer to me than a brother. Uh, you know, we, we're very close. We get along. We actually you must fight. understand one another. We, uh, sometimes we fight only because every performer in the world, they don't mention that to the public, and I, I, I'm even careful about saying this now, but almost every night, it's very rare when everything falls in. And you're always what they say in the theater where you're pushing around the furniture to make it all work, you know? And, and you walk up saying, God, the, the public doesn't realize what it is. Sometimes they do if they're very astute, you know. But most of the time, it's really just not, especially working different concert halls every night, every, every atmosphere is different. So you have to stay very flexible, and uh, you just keep your fingers crossed on a nightly basis. That's where the butterflies come from. You just hope everything works. All these songs I'm singing are from my new album called Tony Bennett on Holiday. And I'd love to have you buy that record because I need the money. <laughs> and that's got so high And that's not so loose So the Bible said And it still is news The showstopper on his latest is a magical mixture of Bennett and Billie Holiday singing God bless the child. God bless the child that's got his own. That's got his own. Tony, we all want to know this. When you're singing songs like, I want to be around to pick up the pieces when somebody breaks your heart, are you actually thinking of a real life situation in your life? Not, not in my life. I think everybody's. I mean, we all, you know, 
have to go through uh, getting accepted and and then not accepted and you know you just every every one of us so I I, I emphasize this feeling and simpatico and simpatico with everyone in the audience we're, we're all in it together you know and everybody uh, gets their toes stepped on every once in a while I want to be around the good of people when somebody breaks your heart To be that into the music and sing it with the kind of conviction you sing it with, I assume at some point you have to have lived it. True, Nespa? Well, absolutely, yeah. We all do. You know, some, some people give us great warmth and, and inspiration. Other people say, uh, what do you want? <laughs> you are just more incredible every time I see you. Well, I don't know. You. I don't know. <laughs> You don't, if I may say, just have talent, you have taste, too. They're two different things. Do you know where you develop your sense of taste? Yeah, my parents, because we grew up during the Depression, and we were forced to gravitate toward education and quality. I mean, I, I'll never forget, uh, my mom used to say, if you're going to buy a record, don't buy a record for yourself. Buy a record that all of us in the family are going to like. So we buy Caruso. Mm. And uh, it, it started out like that from childhood. You know, just, uh, and then my brother was a singer in the Metropolitan Opera at the age of 14. He, was, uh, he sang solo spots mm. in the Met. They called him little, the Little Caruso. He used to do radio shows. And it, was, it was a great experience to uh, think quality and be around quality. The I still like it to this day. Mm -hmm. There's a moment in your show where you tell the audio technician to turn all the microphones off and you're going to do Fly Me to the Moon unplugged, if you like. Mm -hmm. No microphone assistance at all. Vance, could we turn all the microphones off? Thanks. <laughs> Poets often use many words to say a simple thing. It takes thought and time and rhyme to make a poem sing. And in a 1,500-seat hall or whatever, you'll just belt it out a cappella. Right. And it sounds as magnificent in the back row as it does in the front row. Right. Where'd you get that idea from? That's a great idea. I got it from uh, years ago. They, the cab drivers in New York City were, little, were philosophers. They'd be able to tell you, uh, well, everybody, you know, just how things should be. They, so when I, did, I had my first hit records, you know, these cab drivers would say to me, you singers, all, they're all, you're all phonies. So I said, what do you mean? He said, well, you use a microphone. He said, when, way back when I, when I was growing up, he said, Al Jolson and, and Ethel Merman, they would never used a, mic a microphone. They used to sing and hit the back of the house. <laughs> so one day I just tried it, and uh, I liked it. And uh, you, you, you need the right hall. You know, it has to be the right acoustics and all that. You know, and once, but the, it's funny. Uh, when I leave uh, the theater, people end up just remembering that. Uh, in the whole show, they'll remember the, the song I did without the microphone. In other words, please be true. In other words, I love you. I read somewhere that you said it took you 10 years to figure out how to walk on stage. What did that mean? The best expl explanation I could give you is what, what, uh, what George Burns told me. He said, the, the young performers, you know, you see them on television today, they're young, they have energy, they look great. He said, well, when they get on stage, he said, they, they're just repetitive. They, they really haven't got a show. They can't hold, hold an audience for an hour. So he said, so he said years ago, he said, we used to go on the road and you went from town to town and you were able to get lousy before you got good. 
And it takes 10 years to, to learn the mistakes that you make and what, learning what to leave out, what to put in, when to get off the stage, when to get on the stage, how to get on the stage, all kinds of rules. And it takes 10 years to just get comfortable with all that. I told you just before we started that, that I got two little kids who listen to your music religiously and love it. Right. Can you believe little kids would listen to Tony just, Bennett music and dig I, it? I love that more than anything else. Right. You know, I'm about to do a, a children's album. Uh, and uh, I just love the fact that if I could ever communicate with the little kids, that would be one of the supreme uh, victories in my life. I like that a lot. It's a great pleasure to meet you. Thank you. You should have many, many more years and many, many more Grammys. Thanks for the nice Senor Benedetto. Right, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. When I come home to you, San Francisco, Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit TVO.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.